This is Dr. Howard Strassel with a view to learn hints from Howard, restorative problem solvers. Today I'm going to talk to you about bioactive materials. When I talk about bioactive materials, I'm referring to two classes of dental restorative materials. Restorative materials that are fluoride releasing and are remineralizing, and restorative materials that form a surface layer of apatite like material in the presence of an inorganic phosphate solution, materials that allow us to form reparative dentin. Uh, when doing direct pulp capping, uh, regenerative therapy, with uh, appetite, uh, restorative materials that, when used as root canal sealers, will be kind to the PDL. So remineralizing bioactive materials, we know these as the glass ionomer cements. The, we've seen significant improvements since their first release. They've been demonstrated to be fluoride releasing and are remineralizing to both enamel and to the dentin. Our other type of bioactive material are the apatite formation materials. The materials like our Portland cement materials, our MTAs, our, our tricalcium silicates, our biodentin. And these are known to allow us to do pulpal regenerative therapy. So when we talk about remineralizing bioactive materials, uh, and we compare fluoride release between a glass ionomer and a composite, that a glass ionomer, because of its acid-base reaction, allows uptake of fluoride into the tooth. The fluoride's rechargeable through toothpaste and through mouth rinses that contain fluoride. We see a zone of inhibition uh, to uh, bacteria, and we see a zone of remineralization, uh, generally about a millimeter surrounding that restorative material. We compare it to composite, generally like your composites, where we see no acid-base reaction, no ion exchange. In fact, the resin primer is a fluoride barrier, and we see no fluoride uptake. So for a high caries risk patient, uh, whether behaviors contribute or for other reasons, uh, for these patients, using a resin-modified glass ionomer makes sense. Uh, the same is true for xerostomic patients which have a high carry who have a high caries risk. We see a decreased salivary flow due to medications, aging, radiation therapy, uh, chemotherapy, and its effects on the immune system can uh, create a devastating uh, uh, occurrence of uh, root caries for these patients. Some of the glass ionomers available are resin modified glass ionomers, the paste paste Ketac Nano, uh, the conventional glass ionomer Ketac Molar, resin modified Fuji 2LC, conventional glass ionomer powder liquid uh, Fuji 9 GP, uh, Chemfill Rock, and others. And these are generally uh, supplied uh, in a capsule that's mixed on a, a triturator. Uh, that can then, using a small application tip, be precisely placed in the cavity preparation. Let's move to the bioactive appetite forming materials. Uh, uh, we see significant challenges in our practice. Managing an exposed pulp, sealing a perforation, treating a resorptive lesion, uh, apexification. These appetite forming materials, these Portland cement materials, are known for the formation of a high pH pure calcium hydroxide. That's our regenerative agent within the pulp. It, we see remineralization of the dentin. In fact, the formation of dentin, uh, that uh, secondary reparative dentin, that in fact is due to the calcium hydroxide. And in fact, with these materials under a microscope, it looks like, uh, uh, looks like dentin. Uh, we see the preservation of pulpal vitality, both with direct and indirect pulp capping, promoting pulpal healing. In fact, the sealing of dentin, repairing root perforations, repairing uh, resorptive lesions and apexification have all been reported in the literature uh, using these materials for clinical success. And the choices with our Portland cements are our MTA and our biodentin. Now, there is a difference in the physical properties of these materials. MTA has a long setting time and weak mechanical properties, usually requiring a two-stage restorative material. Uh, place the MTA, and then two to three days later, go back into the tooth and do your definitive restoration. 
That's why when BioDenton came onto the market, the fact that it had a short setting time of about 10 minutes with mechanical properties equivalent to other liners that we were using, the resin modified glass ionomer liners, allowed us to do one visit restorative procedures. In fact, uh, we know that using these pure calcium hydroxides give us success with pulp capping. In fact, upwards of three years, we'll see upwards of 73% success with direct pulp capping of cariously exposed teeth. And that's for the typical pulp exposure. You see the exposure, you place your uh, pulp capping material, uh, your MTA, your biodentin, over that. Now we go one step further. If we did partial and full pulpotomies, we'll see at three years that the success will be higher. And part of it is we're surgically removing the inflamed tissue adjacent to the bacterial infection. And our success rates jump for both pulpotomies and, uh, uh, and full pulpotomies uh, compared to at partial and full pulpotomies upwards of greater than 99%. But there are key considerations before considering direct pulp capping. <clears throat> the tooth must be vital. The tooth must be asymptomatic with no history of spontaneous pain. The tooth must have no radiographic evidence of periapical pathology, normal to percussion and palpation. Younger patients give us higher success. Dental dam gives us higher success. And so the technique for pulp capping, as described by Bogan and others in the Journal of the American Dental Association, was remove the caries. When carious exposure occurs, control the bleeding with a sodium hypochlorite with a 7 to 1 dilution. Place MTA or biodentin. With MTA, you're temporizing with glass ionomer, restoring it the next visit. With biodentin, you're placing the composite the same visit. And with younger patients, using the dam, having it placed before the exposure, you'll see success rates of nine over nine years of 98%. And so for this pulp cap, where we had a carious exposure, and the tooth was vital, had no problems, uh, no uh, was normal to percussion and palpation, that we did a direct pulp cap with biodentin. Two years later, uh, the pulp cap uh, is successful. We see pulp vitality that's normal. The tooth's been restored with the composite. We see that the pulp chamber and the pulp and the root canals are the same size as when we did the original pulp cap. What's exciting is now we're moving into the area of bioactive endodontic sealers. They have all the desirable properties that we want. Zero microleakage with a high seal. They're biocompatible and resin-free. They're bioactive, a high pH, a pH of about 11. Antimicrobial, excellent mixing and handling properties. In fact, slower setting than uh, some of the other materials we've used. And non-staining to root dentin. Among these products is uh, BioRoot RCS. And what's key is, where BioDentin was fast setting, the same chemical formulation now has been formulated to be slower setting. So it has clinical applications that uh, in the past we were forced to use MTA. Now we can use uh, a sealer that has the properties of a calcium silicate. And so we can use it for perforation repair, as we see here, uh, where we're doing the repair at the same time we're placing the gutta percha. Uh, and we can also do perforation repair on an anterior tooth, where once again we're using it at the same time as a sealer. Easy to place, easy to get the results that we want. And also, with the slower setting of uh, these Portland cement materials, they're easier to place for apexification when compared to traditional calcium hydroxide apexification procedures. This has been Dr. Howard Straslow with A View to Learn, hints from Howard Restorative Problem Solvers, and we've been talking about bioactive materials. Take a look at them, see how they fit into the way you practice dentistry.